Hi boys and girls, let's high five one another in the air. I believe you've had a great week, but before we get into our lesson, let's pray. Father, we thank you even for this day, for this is the day you made. We pray that, Father, you grant us understanding uh, of the Bible lesson. We pray that, Father, you won't let anything distract us from your word, but above all, Help us apply what we're going to learn today. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I have missed you guys. I believe you've had a good time with Teacher Phyllis. Uh, and she did give you some homework. I hope you've been running through that with your guardians and your parents. Uh, and did you get to write down your prayer list? Uh, unfortunately, you cannot interact and share them with me, but I believe you're doing that with your parents. Uh, now, let's get on to our Bible lesson today. In life, we get to opportunities to be chosen to do something. Maybe it's helping our parents. Uh, do the kitchen chores or maybe with the dad clean the car or even say a memory verse and so on and so on and how do we get to feel I believe we all feel uh, excited and we could even act out maybe you're helping in the kitchen or rubbing the board and so forth and so forth so we get to enjoy uh, the task we've been chosen to do. In our lesson today, we're going to learn how God chose Gideon to come to go and rescue the Israelites. The Israelites had sinned and made God very angry and God had given them over to the Midianites who are very oppressive and they were their big enemies. They were so oppressive that even what they had planted in their chambers or in their gardens, they kept on raiding the farms and cutting down they have, uh, the, the, the plants before they even got ready for harvest. The Israelites were so fearful that they even ran and head into the caves. Imagine, they must have been really frightened. And one of the Israelites, Gideon, in the course of, uh, after seven years, he is preparing food for his family. It's a wine press. They would beat the, the, the wheat so that they could produce the grain and make flour out of it. And suddenly, an angel, uh, uh, but before that, the Lord had listened to the cry, the, the Israelites had cried out to the Lord and sent an angel to them. And this is what the Lord told the, the Israelites. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors and drove them from before you and gave you their land. In essence, he was just telling them how he had been good to them and yet they had turned away to worship idols. What are idols? Idols is any object made in the image of a man or an animal. It could be even in the image of a, a moon or sun. Imagine they saw it better to serve these idols than to serve their God who had done so much for them. Fast forward. Gideon is preparing. Uh, he's actually hiding from the Midianites, preparing food for for his family. 
and an angel appears before him and he tells him he tells him the Lord is with you mighty warrior and he's wondering me mighty warrior here you can see Gideon at the wine press and the angel seated under the tree and he's wondering mighty warrior then he's asking but why has the Lord left us to our enemies he's wondering why has the Lord abandoned them but the Lord turned to him and said Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand and I'm not, am I not sending you? The Lord sends Gideon to save the Israelites from the Midianites' oppression. And our story is from Judges 6 to 7. Don't turn there. It's a big uh, scripture. In your own time you'll do that with your parents. God assures uh, Gideon that uh, he will be with him. And Gideon runs. He was unsure. He runs. He tells God to wait. If you're really the one talking to me, let me prepare a sacrifice. Then if fire comes down and you, you, you burn up the sacrifice, then I'll know you are the one who is uh, indeed saying this. He went, got a goat, and he did prepare a sacrifice. And fire came from heaven and consumed uh, the, the, the sacrifice. Next, take, uh, the, the, the other task was for him to bring down the idols the Israelites had built. And even uh, Gideon's father, Joash, had already erected uh, an idol. So Gideon, God told Gideon to go and destroy the idols so he waited for the night because he knew if he was to do that during the day people would be very angry and they would beat him up so at night he mobilized uh, some people and they went and pounded they destroyed these big idols stepped on them and crushed them and in the following day when the people learned that they were very angry and they wanted to kill Gideon and they came to their house but their father Joash intervened and told them indeed they were doing the wrong thing and that was not right later God learns, uh, Gideon learns the Midianites the enemies were preparing to attack them so Gideon prepared uh, and called and mobilized uh, his own people to go fight the Midianites. But yet, still, he was very uh, frightened because he knew the Midianites had come and camped down at the valley. And Gideon was up the hill. And he could see the enemy indeed was a very large army and he was so fearful. So he asked God for a sign indeed if he was going to defeat the Midianites. The first sign he asked was if indeed God was going to help him to show him by putting a fleece. Fleece is wool from the animals on the ground and if it was going to stay wet the following day he knew God would be with him. So the following day when he came in sure enough the fleece was still wet. Still, he was not uh, confident of going out. He was still feeling not sure if he was really going to defeat these people. So again, he asked God not to be angry. And he again, he asked for a second sign. If indeed it was God, let the whole ground be wet. Uh, but the fleece in this time to be dry and the following day we find the fleece 
was dry. And he knew indeed God was going to be with him. Many a time, we want to see signs what God is doing in us. But Gideon trusted in the Lord and what he's doing, although what he did was not right. And this brings us to a memory verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. Let's say it together, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Again, say to your parents or to one another, it starts with the memory verse, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Jeremiah 29, 11. So keep on, it's very simple. Remember that. We are going to post, uh, uh, get a, a post and follow up on the memory verse. So remember that God has a plan for you. Maybe it's to be a pastor or a teacher and so forth. So continue trusting in the Lord. Even as we get into the week, we pray that God will watch over you. Thank you for being attentive and listening to my lesson. Let's pray. Father, we thank you even for this lesson. We pray that uh, you will be with us even as we help us apply and be obedient with us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.